I have watched all of Rings of Power that we have up to this point, season one and season two, episodes one through three, and I still don't understand really what people's problem is with this show. I've been a Lord of the Rings fan for a long time, for 20 plus years, and I am a big fan, of course, of the movies, and then from there I kind of got a little bit more into the books. I haven't read everything, though, but I just don't understand what people's issues are. But that's all right, because we're going to be talking about the things that I enjoyed from season two, episodes one through three of Rings of Power. But I will say there is a little bit of a criticism that I have at the end. So if you want to hear about that, let me know and uh, let's get into it. Let's talk spoilers. So right away, of course, off the bat, I got to say the visuals, the music, these big landscapes, the thing I really love that I think Rings of Power does really well at the top of its game other than having way too much money to even know what to do with, and yet somehow I'm still getting ads, even though I know Amazon, you're making a bunch of money on Rings of Power. I know you spend a lot of money, but you make a bunch of money, but you're still giving me those ads. But that's all right, because I'm willing to sit through the ads because it is such a pretty show. It also just audibly pleases my ears. My ears literally sing. I feel like... I'm being sung to like I am the mountain, you know, it's just, it's so beautiful. It pleases me in so many ways. So that's one of the things that I probably love the most about this show is that element. And I think in these first three episodes, that's still abundantly clear visually. It's amazing. And I also just love that we're going to so many different locations. I think the other thing is it really helps to keep it clear as to when we're in these different parts of the story. Not that I need like a visual aid. It just helps, I think, when you have so many moving pieces going on and so many characters. And that's something that Lord of the Rings, I feel like, has always had. It's always had a pretty big cast. So I do like when the locations also help us to just visually be like, oh yeah, now we're here, we're doing something different, we're with these characters. The other thing that I really enjoy about these first three episodes of Rings of Power Season 2 is I just feel like they're interesting. There's so many twists already. There's so many cool things that they're doing with the story in terms of characters journeys and where they're going it's it's interesting because with rings of power we already know a lot about what's established in the world like a lot of these characters we know where they end up but something that i think is interesting is seeing the journey and how they get there it's kind of something similar with house of the dragon not as much season two but season one at least of house of the dragon and i think rings of power has carried this through to this season at least so far these are only the first three episodes so you never know we could just fall off a cliff at some point but so far i feel like the twists are there everything's interesting. Some of my favorite moments from these first three episodes would probably be Sauron disguising himself to ally himself with Celebrimbor. I thought that was really interesting. And when he showed up as Halbrand to talk to him, I was just like, oh no. I thought, I was like, I know he needs him, but like, something bad gonna happen to Celebrimbor? But I think something bad is gonna happen after this because he seems totally deceived he seems like he thinks this is all so legit and when the truth comes out i think Celebrimbor is gonna be a big mess guys i don't think it's gonna be good for him the other thing that i found super fascinating that i was like oh my goodness what are we gonna do about this is the mountains have stopped responding to the song of the dwarves and that is also just like that's just huge. That's huge on so many levels. Even when we just talk about the creation of Middle Earth and how that's all like a song, like this is like everything is really messed up. Everything is really messed up. You know, things are messed up when the mountains stop responding to that. But also that's literally feels like it's a symbol almost of the story of creation in this world, which I think is so interesting. So that was pretty upsetting. Obviously we have a plan and it ties back to uh, you know, Celebrimbor making these rings and being manipulated by Sauron. So that should also all be interesting. And I can't wait to see what happens with that. I just can't wait to see what happens with the rings in general. We've already gotten a few rings. We've already seen how it's, I think, shifting people. And oh, wait till there's that one ring to rule them all. And everyone's like, oh man, are we all just puppets? Oh no, what do we do? That's going to be cool to see as well. Finally, the third moment that I really loved was probably the coronation of Muriel 
And I was thinking that I thought I knew how it might go. And then they changed some things with it, I believe. But I kind of like it. I kind of like it. So Muriel robbed of her crown by Farazhan, who has been scheming. He's been, you know, stirring people up. He has her exposed in front of everyone during her coronation. And then the craziest thing happens, an eagle shows up. And I thought it was pretty clear based on the foreshadowing that we got that the eagle was there for Muriel. And I thought, oh wait, are we gonna, how is this, how is this happening? What's happening? We're doing different things. Are we going down a different path? But then no, no, Farazhan still becomes the ruler. He still becomes the king here, but it's not the same as people might know from the books. So it's a little bit different, I believe. And what ends up happening here is instead of him like tricking her into like marrying him and it's all this other gross stuff that happens in this version, he gets interpreted as being the rightful ruler because of the eagle, because the eagles don't talk. The eagles don't talk in the movies either. But in the books, eagles can talk. I've I've been told this is a thing. I like I said, I've read some, but I don't I'm not like deep into all the lore of Lord of the Rings. The movies are my main my main jam. But I do know in the books, eagles talk. Here, they don't talk. So this eagle comes in and people interpret that symbol how they want. And then I was like, man, the cool thing too is that, you know, I feel like we have an idea of what the eagle was there to represent. But these people don't because of their perception. And I also just thought it was fascinating because it reminded me of how when we see a symbol, a symbol is made by us. So it also a lot of the time has to do with just our perspective and how we frame the symbol as to how we're going to interpret it. And that is a clear example of that happening in this show. And I just thought it was well done. And I think it's going to be for the best considering the other stuff that I... I, uh, I believe happens with Muriel, which is uh, pretty awful. So I think they made a good change there, but we'll see where it goes and we'll see what they do with it. I'm enjoying a lot of the relationships that we're working on so far in this. I think a few of my favorite ones are probably <laughs> Galadriel and Elrond, who uh, are friends that are really struggling and kind of some frenemy vibes. I really love where we leave it off in episode three, where Elrond is put in charge of the party that Galadriel is part of, and where Galadriel's leadership role is kind of taken from her. And I'm very interested to see how she reacts to that. I think she's gonna be pretty feisty. <laughs> Galadriel is a character that likes to lead, and she definitely has ego, and that's like a punch right to her ego, you know what I mean? But I, I've really been enjoying the tension with them so far at the beginning of the season, and I can't wait to see where that evolves. And I hope that they become friends at the end, because I do love their friendship. And, you know, Galadriel was manipulated, okay guys? She was manipulated. Why? Why? You're li I know it's embarrassing. It's embarrassing, because my girl was trying to get Sauron, and then she found him, and she didn't even know. And he was there the whole time, and he totally, he totally messed with her head. And... He's probably still in her head, like Elrond said. Like, the fact that she wears the ring, that's not a good sign. That's not a good sign. But I, uh, you know, I am rooting for her and Elrond to become friends again because I, I love them together. And I just think, you know, don't let this get in your way. The fact that Galadriel was manipulated. I also really love the relationship between Durin and Diza, which obviously I've been... I've loved that relationship since season one. I continue to love it in this show. I just think they're so cute together. And... I love how they challenge each other and I love how they also a lot of the times compliment each other and are there for each other during the hard times. I'm curious to follow their story and just the dwarves in general. I feel like they're up against a big problem and when they get rings it might just be a bigger problem really. It's you know what Durin says to his dad to the king is correct. The idea of maybe the dwarves if they try things the elves way, maybe you just mess stuff up more. And it's this idea of don't mess with stuff that you don't understand. Don't mess with stuff you don't understand is going to be something that everyone's going to be dealing with. Because these rings, we don't understand them. We think we understand them, but do we? Finally, I will say that my last relationship that I really love in this is uh, Isildur and Theo. And I just love that they're able to kind of bond over this loss of their mothers, even though, you know... Isildur doesn't necessarily see it, but Theo's like crying and <sighs> that whole thing was just so moving to me. Also, what's happening with this girl that they picked up? I, she's working for Adar. I, something's happening and man, 
That's looking like it's going to be messy. We will see what happens with that. And, you know, as we were touching on Adar, I also love how the orcs are portrayed in the show still. I just think it's so much more interesting what they're doing with the orcs. This idea that the orcs are a people. They just want to live their lives, but everyone thinks they're super nasty. And then Sauron just wants to like manipulate them. And I'm very curious to see how that is going to play out and how we get to where we are in Lord of the Rings with the, the orcs. I just feel like they're on a journey themselves as a people. And I don't know, I sometimes I just feel bad for the orcs. I'm like, man, our orcs just, they're gross, but like, they just want to live their lives. They're weird, gross orc lives. Like, it's a problem because they're like infecting everything with their nasty. But <laughs> maybe we just give them some land and let them be nasty. You know, I don't know. Is th could that solve the problem? Speaking of things that could have solved problems, in these first few episodes, there's a major problem that leads to Celebrimbor working with Sauron, who's in disguise. That whole thing has to do with a message is sent to Celebrimbor after the king, the elven king, learns that, yeah, this is Halbrand with Sauron. That's all revealed. They're like, we got to tell Celebrimbor this is what's up. It ain't good. Don't get involved with this. This is bad news, baby. But they're not able to get it across, that message. It gets intercepted. I wonder by who. Sauron's there. He's, you know, he's trying to mess with everything. And so he plays on the fact that Celebrimbor hasn't heard anything about the rings and that's the way he's able to connect with him and be like, yeah, I know what it's like to be like left behind kind of sucks. Anyways, I guess I'll leave because you don't want me here. And then he's like, wait a minute. No, 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 no. You can come in. Yeah. Yeah, it does suck. They should, they should have sent me a message. Meanwhile, they've sent you messages. You know what would solve all of that? If we had a cell phone. I feel like the studio was thinking, they could have been thinking, you know, this whole problem, we could solve it. If we had one thing, I bet someone at some point was pitching like, imagine this, rings of power, but modern day. Look, listen to me, okay? Listen to me, baby, I got a plan. I feel like this whole thing, we could smooth it out. What if we, what if we fix everything in rings of power, you know? There's a lot of doom, there's a lot of gloom, there's a lot of pity parties, a lot of the people are critiquing the writing because everyone's always arguing. It's like there's some kind of big conflict happening in this show. <laughs> people don't like it. So what if we resolve it, okay? What if? Hear me out. What if the king, he's got a cell phone, right? He picks up the cell phone, he calls Celebrimbor, he dials him up, and he says, Hello, Celebrimbor, are you there? Hmm, yes. I have something to tell you. Yes, Galadriel's here. She would, she would like to be on the line. Hold on a second. Well, I may have done an... Whoops, uh... Turns out Halbrand is Sauron, yes. I know, it's quite shocking. I know, I was very shocked. I didn't know I didn't want to tell the king. It's true, she didn't want to tell me, but we made her, and so... Yes, and so we're just calling you. It saves time. That way we don't have to send a message, and it could maybe get intercepted by Sauron. Oh, wait. Oh, I think, wait. Is our call being intercepted by Sauron? Oh, dear. Yeah, so it might not fix everything, to be honest, because I guess Sauron could intercept probably calls, too. He's got magic. But maybe some people would like the show better. I don't know. Some people seem to think it's just too miserable, I guess. I don't know. I, I, I honestly still don't know. If you're one of the people that doesn't like the show, uh, let me know down in the comments. What's going on for you? Give me some, give me some examples of things. I've read some articles to try to understand, but every point that's been mentioned to me, I just don't agree with it, or I just don't think it's a, like a, I just... None of these points are ringing true to me. I'm waiting for someone to point something out for me to be like, that's a good point. It hasn't happened yet. So maybe you got the good points. Maybe I'll be able to, or I'll be able to at least get it. I mean, I kind of get it, but I don't really get it. The last few things that I just wanted to say is that Beric the horse must be protected at all costs. I love his adventures and I hope they keep going. And I hope we get many years of Beric because I really enjoyed him running in to save Isildur. I thought that was so cute. And then and then Isildur came back to save him with Theo. You can't get in between a relationship. <laughs> Nothing beats the relationship between a man and his horse. It's sacred. It's sacred in Middle Earth. People love horses in this show. They love them. So my final uh, point is a critique. And my critique is just this. Amazon Prime 
why you do this to me? Why you need to drop three episodes? It took me a couple days to get through these episodes because I've also been playing Star Wars Outlaws. In fact, I might even be live on my channel right now playing it. You can check it in the live tab or at twitch.tv slash vampx13 if you want to join me for a live stream sometime. But yeah, I've been streaming a lot of Star Wars Outlaws, so it was really hard for me to get to this on top of that and watch three episodes. That is over three hours. That is like a super, that is a real... Lord of the Rings level movie. Why? Why? You did this with Fallout. With Fallout, you dropped like everything. And I was like, guys, slow down. Please stop. I need time to consume this. With Rings of Power, I like to, I liked, I watched season one over the course of a few months. I took my time with it. I didn't even watch full episodes at once. I watched it in chunks. I, I really cut it up and I had to watch three episodes one after the other and I feel like the ending of episode one is strong enough to make people come back for the other episodes but I guess Amazon Prime's like we got too much stuff we need to get it all out <laughs> quick make all of the content creators watch three hours even though some of them maybe like to slowly consume their content and reflect on it and think about it but I digress so that's where I'm at with this one um I think episodes one through three let's see out of five I think I'm gonna give episode one a four out of five episode two I think I'm gonna give it a mm, I want to say like a three out of five it just wasn't it, it was building stuff that I think really came to fruition in episode three. So maybe that's why they did these three episodes. Episode three for me was pretty good, though. I would say that one was a five out of five for me. It gave me pretty much everything that I wanted from the episode. And I like what they're doing. I like some of the little changes that they're making. And I, I'm, I'm confident that it's going to take us to some interesting places. So this is where I'm at. That's where I'm at with this one. I hope that you enjoyed these episodes. Overall, I've been quite enjoying them and I cannot wait to watch more. Yeah, if you guys want more episode reviews as this comes out, please do let me know, share this video, like it, do all the things to engage with it so it boosts enough. If we get enough views on it, I might do it episode by episode. But otherwise, I'll see you guys at the end of the season where I will do an end of the season, a full season review on it. Yeah, rings of power. It's awesome. And you know, if we, if we do go episode by episode, or if we get, if I just do a full season review, maybe, maybe I'll bust out. I've got a cosplay. I've got a, I got a Lord of the Rings cosplay I could bust out. Could be fun. I don't know. Maybe we'll do it. We'll see. I'll see you next time. But until then, friends, stay nerdy.